Hey, music is all about conveying ideas, emotions, and concepts, like this guy. Or this. What we're gonna look at today is the dark side of scales. Yes, let's check it out. Look, I'm gonna come clean. When I started playing guitar and tried to solo, I was extremely lost. The word arpeggio sounded like a very scary word, but it's very important for us to actually understand what's going on there because if we can do that, we can articulate, create with so much more ease and everything will make sense. I'm gonna go step by step so you really get it, but you need to practice it. If you practice it for one week, it will be so much better, it will be amazing. The first step is taking this bar chord, C major, looking at that and breaking it down to three notes. So one, three, five, C, E, and G. And what I'm going to do is play it in this area here. One, three, five, one, three, five, one. You can also add this E here. So we get what we call an arpeggio. Now, this is something you heard before, but we need to not only know the shape, but we need to understand and hear and feel what's going on. If we can tag it, we can learn a lot of music today. So, we're gonna sing the C. So beautiful. Give yourself to the sound. to listen and really focus on the colors but also know the notes when I'm singing even if you're just listening even if you're not holding a guitar right now look at this and listen and try to know if you know what notes I'm playing because there are only three options one three and five C E and G I want to hear you can hum the C do, si, do. okay this is how the three feels do, do. this is how the five feel how G feels again C and then again do if we can understand that and feel it in a truthful way, we already know a lot of information because all these kind of lines All these ideas, what I'm playing is basically I'm just thinking about C major and I'm surrounding the notes around it to articulate this tension and release. Big news, I created two new workshops for you guys and I'm doing a huge sale for early birds. So check this out, it's yours. And the three main notes that I'm referring in these lines and these ideas that repeat again and again, whether it's rock, blues, jazz, funk, all these ideas are being repeated because har harmony and solo are based on chords oftentimes. And these chords are what we call arpeggios. So in order to actually hear and be able to play music better, this is really essential. Just in case you don't believe me, check this one. This is all about arpeggio. Utilizing these ideas of arpeggios, the one, three, five in a solo and surrounding the one, three, five with other notes to create this tension and release. Okay, so you understand it's cool. Big news, I'm putting out a record that I put all my heart and soul into. I'd love for you to check it out and listen. And if you'd like to support, it would be amazing. All you need to do is pre-save the album. That would mean a lot. It's of course free. Check this out. The next step for me is filling some sort of groove. You can use a metronome, or you can also just groove by yourself and play it in time. Not fast, but with clarity and intention. So I'm really thinking about the notes. So if I stop you here, you'd be like, what is this? Ah, this is C. If I stop you here, ah, of course, this is G, the fifth of the chord. And you can not only know the note, but you can really feel and associate the feeling and the color to that note. So again, the work is not only technical that we are playing a shape up and down. No, this is not enough because that's something that anybody can do. The point and where it all gonna click and actually um, get into your system is when you start tagging that information and then it will also get easier because you actually understand and interact with the information in an emotional way. This video is sponsored by Neural DSP. I actually use Neural DSP in all of my videos, literally everything and every time I record guitars, I use Ableton and Neural DSP, and this is a plugin that I love the most. I think it sounds great, it's super easy to use, and it's literally on everything I do with guitar. So you can check it out, they're doing a big sale. Have fun.
The next step is adding the seven. So we have one, three, five, and now we have one, three, five, and seven. Major seven, so C major seven, this kind of sound. Not the easiest shape, maybe you can play it like this. All right, I'm looking at my core triad, the C major, and I'm adding the seventh here. I want you to look at it from the eyes of C major. This is why I like thinking about it as these like hidden secret chords because they're basically a part of the C major scale. So I want to hear and see the C major position here in a clear way, so, sort of like dots of light across the guitar so I can kind of feel it and see it and the arpeggio highlights as these dots of light in the context of C major. So again, I have this sound in my hand, in my ears, in my fingers of the scale. And on that scale, I see the chord C major. And I see it all across the guitar in different ways because I want to be free and flexible in, with information. So when I'm hearing, I can find it in an easy way. And I really see and hear these notes referring to this C and that center all the time. The next step for us is doing an open spread triad, a three octaves. The reason I like that sound is first, I think it sounds really cool. The second thing is it's not locking me in one area. So I start seeing the guitar as music versus just, oh, this position, this position. Now positions are great, but we don't wanna be stuck with it, right? So we don't wanna just being able to play these couple of shapes. We wanna understand the note. That's why I'm repeating the color because once we hear things, they get more and more flexible. So check it out. What I'm playing is the same idea. C, E, and G, again, starting here, C, E, and G, and again, finding the C, C, E, and G, one, three, five, and then resolving here to the C, and then descending, the same thing. You can find uh, different ways that works for you, but I would try to kind of be consistent with the fingering so uh, you know something that works pretty well. And again, on the fly, you can always adjust things, but I would suggest working with something that makes some sense. Now. When you're playing these shapes, remember at all times asking yourself, do I know this note? What is this sound? How does it feel? Because otherwise you're just playing up and down shapes and it's gonna take very long to actually internalize it. So I'm trying to save you time by tagging it emotionally and intellectually, right? So keep that in mind at all times. So it's not just about playing everything crazy fast, it's also about understanding and feeling it. Once we do that, it will actually be way easier to play things extremely fast. All right, check it out. So now I'm going to do the C major seven on that shape. So I'm getting this kind of shape of two notes per string, which I find extremely beautiful, except that last one if I want to catch it. So one, uh, one, two, one, four, one, two, one, four, referring to the finger number, two, one, four, the same shape, and then you can do three, four maybe, and then sliding back. Which I'm getting this kind of sound. And this is really cool because of two reasons. First of all, we start seeing the C major and we can think almost as that major, C major seven as an approach to this triad C. So if we know our basic arpeggio, this one here and this one of the three, three octaves, we just add a chromatic. I'm gonna tell you a little secret. So that sound and that shape of two notes per string can be adjusted to different colors. So this is C major seven, but if I change one note, so C seven, C minor seven, C half diminish. Now, once we get into that zone, it's basically based on the idea of two notes per string. So that is connected in my mind a lot of times with pull off and hammer on, which is connected to legato. So I'm just gonna show you one exercise to get a little bit of motion there. So these exercises and that sound of the arpeggio will be easier. So what I wanna understand is the mechanism of the shape. This is hammer on and pull off. So I'm trying to understand that motion. Different fingerings. 
and that shape, that sound, and that motion helps me here to hear that and to have stronger fingers. This video is not about legato, but I'm utilizing that idea of pull off on hammer on when I'm playing these arpeggios, so I just wanted to show you that because I think it's super, super cool. We have this loop, C, C7, F major 7, F minor 6. So we're in C major, 5, 4, 4, 4 minor. I'm going to use still C major scale, and specifically I'm going to target the 1 through 5 of the C major chord. Check this out. Here we go. Three to the five here, right? Thinking about it. So what I just did is really thinking about the triad, about this shape, this framework of the major chord of C major, because C major or C major 7 to C7 is still 1, 3, 5, so I can still utilize these three notes. And then on F major 7 and, and F minor, I mainly play still that triad, but I'm hearing the chord, so for example on the F minor, I did give that G to the A flat, so I got the flat 3 of the F minor. Now you don't have to be that specific, but what I'm asking, what I really want you to try and do, is start this process of highlighting chords and starting to see what happens really one-to-one -one in music, so you can be more accurate, you can create more, and really hear way, way more. I will say this is a process, right? So it takes a little bit of time, but in one week you can do a lot of damage. So just go ahead, go practice. Thank you so much for being here and watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys very soon. Peace out.